So there's so much going on here, but I want to start talking through some of the basics and fundamentals of an electrical panel. First, there's water on the floor. Don't stand in the water. And if you do, put some insulating surface down. A two by 12 board, three feet long, creates a great standing surface. Um, electrical boots, boots that have actually electrical safety hazard, insulation built into them is a great idea for, for an electrician. So let's talk this through. A couple things I'm gonna critique, the good, the bad, the ugly, everything going on here. One, I walked into this situation and the electrical panel cover was left off. There is exposed power in terminals. This power is exposed at the top, that is deadly. Power at the bottom, these stabs, not everybody knows that that is an electrical hazard. Most people will generally keep their hands out of a panel. Can't count on that. You can't count on the absence of stupidity, right? Put the dang cover on. Um, so all of these terminals down the left side and the right side of the panel are live and hazardous. The terminals, main terminals for the incoming conductors at the top of the panel, live and hazardous. And these down here are called stabs on the bus. Those are also live and hazardous. Anytime you're working on electrical equipment and you step away, you should protect it. If there are other people in the construction space, in the residence, in the business, protect the exposed live parts for personnel safety. All right, usually we keep the panel cover boxed up and pretty, because that's what people are gonna see at the end of the job. We don't want it to get knocked around, scratched, beat up, bent corners, so we'll keep it boxed up. The panel cover is what contains the labels. How do you maintain circuit labeling in the meantime? Our best practice is to take a short length of wire that we have cut off the length of cable when we have um, terminated the panel. Every, you're, you're gonna be stripping off two, three, four foot long sections of outer cable jacket. Take a snippet of that section, write on it with Sharpie, and label the circuit. We've got smoke detectors, we've got master bedroom, we've got first floor lights, we have bedroom lights, living room lights. Every circuit requires a label. That is a code requirement must have a distinct label that is not occupancy specific, that is not occupancy specific, and it must be comprehensive. So we've, we've got a good start here. And then every circuit will obviously be landed on a breaker that is properly sized to protect the wire and serve the load, to protect the wire and to serve the load. Now, a couple more observations here. One of the most commonly overlooked, the most commonly overlooked um, and very important functions of an electrician in this electrical panel is to properly terminate the wiring. And so a couple aspects of that are, one, if you're landing aluminum conductors, use Nolox um, or anti-oxidation compound and brush it into the work. Literally, use a wire brush. We're gonna demonstrate this in a later video. Wire brush, that anti-oxidation compound. It's a gray goop, it's really thick. It'll stain your clothes and your hands. Wire brush that into the aluminum conductor to prevent oxidation and improve conductivity. Secondly, torque specifications. Every terminal in this panel, every screw terminal on the breaker, on the neutral bar, on the ground bar, the main lugs, every terminal has a manufacturer's torque specification based upon the size of the wire that is inserted. That information is contained on the inside of the cover and on the label, typically both places, on the label inside the panel housing itself. A torque screwdriver and a torque wrench are both readily accessible tools and every terminal must be well, we, well, our function is this, quick hand tighten. At the end, once everything is finalized, because things do change midstream, at the end, part of the final punch out is that torquing down of terminals. You don't wanna over tighten it. That's just as bad as under tightening it. I've seen plenty of terminals fail because they were over tightened and they snapped. But that snap, that crack line in the terminal was almost microscopic, very hard to detect but it did result in a hot spot, uh, dangerously hot, actually at a later date. Um, in this particular panel, you'll notice there's not a main breaker, which would either be located typically at the top of the panel 
or the bottom of the panel. This panel doesn't have one. That's because the main breaker is located outside on the back of the home at the point of the utility connection. So this is called a main lug panel because the main connection are lugs, not breakers to power the panel. So in that case, after the main point of disconnect, neutrals and grounds must be separated. What you'll see in this panel is my neutrals are on the right side of the panel. My grounds are on the left, left or right. Doesn't matter. They could both be on the same side, but it gets congested. So separating them is wise, but my neutral bar is insulated from the panel housing itself. There is no electrical connection between my neutral bar and the panel housing or my neutral bar and the grounding conductors on the left side of this panel. They are intentionally isolated because this panel is after the first means of disconnect. And that is a code requirement. Secondly, my grounding bar on the left side of the panel with my grounding conductors is intentionally bonded with a green screw. That's a code requirement, a green screw to the panel housing such that the housing itself, which will be incorporated into the cover itself, because it'll be screwed together with machine thread screws, the grounding conductors and the ground bar are electrically and mechanically entirely bonded. That's critical. In addition to this, from this point, we have grounding and bonding of our localized piping systems. Those terms get used so often and often incorrectly, and they're almost in common speak interchangeable, but they do mean two separate things. Um, every jurisdiction is going to be a little bit different. You have to understand your state and their local adoptions and the authority that has jurisdiction. From the perspective of the, of the national electrical code, every metallic piping system, if it's water, gas, an internal boiler system, or another type of piping system must be electrically and mechanically bonded to the service. That wire is sized and we're going to get into that at a later episode. Um, there's, there's an entire code article that focuses on nothing but that subject. Um, but I do want you to know this, that bonding and grounding, um, will be electrically and mechanically continuous with the grounding conductors, the grounding terminals, and it will be at the breaker panel or at the first means of disconnect. And that wire sizing will be dictated by the code and the location and type of material that is utilized for that is also dictated by the code. More at a later date, join us for that video.